Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how I built my filament splicer or filament welder. Uh, more specifically, this is built for uh, splicing or joining PET filaments. To build this, the main components are a power supply. I am using a 12 volt 3 amps power supply, but this actually provides more than 3 amps. Uh, you would need at least 4 amps, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Also, I have used some 3D printed parts, a PTFE tube, Nikon wire, uh, both pieces of wire used here are Nikron, um, some connector but you can build it without it, and also uh, some wires and a push button. The basic idea of this is that when current goes through the Nikron wire, it will heat up to about 300 degrees. To reach this specific temperature, uh, a specific uh, wire width was used in a specific length, which gives us a specific resistance for this wire. Also, the nichrome wire from uh, up here was also used to have a specific resistance that allows us uh, a certain current to flow through the, the circuit. Now, if I press this button, you will see it glow. And these, uh, I have a thermal camera, uh, which I use to measure the, the actual temperature to see that it's functioning correctly. And if I let go, it will uh, cool down. Also something to keep in mind is that also the nichrome wire from above uh, will heat up to about 200 degrees. It will not turn red like the other one, but it's still very hot. Next, I want to show you the nichrome wire that I used. So I bought three pieces. Uh, I used only two of them. They were fairly cheap. Uh, all three were under uh, two euros. And if we measure the nichrome wire, let me switch this like this. I can show you the thickness of the wire that I used. So this is about 0.4. And this is about 0.8. The other important thing that you need to know is the resistance of the nichrome wire. So for the top part, I, it has a resistance of 1.3 ohms. And for the one that is heating up, let me go out of the way. It has a resistance of 1.3. Uh, I think it's more like 1.2, 1.1, but I think it, uh, the, the screws add additional resistance. And that's all that it's needed to know. Now let's see it in action.
in a few final words. Although this method is perfectly usable, PT filament does not weld easily. So expect some failures from time to time. I found out that this method, using this method, you have a great deal of control because the filament does not light on fire. Um, it's easy to, to move it around while it's melted and then do the weld, but uh, still it's not always perfect. Also, you, if you have a bad weld or a bad joining or whatever, uh, you can easily retry in seconds. You just cut the, the bad part and then retry the weld, which is a big improvement over the previous method I was using, which took a lot of time to, to retry. I hope this helped someone. And if you have questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.